What's up, guys? Apparently, Cosmic Skeptic had a debate about the ethics of veganism with a guy named Sterling on some channel. Modern Day Debate, I guess. Now, before we get into this, look, the title is tongue-in-cheek more than anything. Obviously, Alex on the left is a very intelligent guy. But, you know, whether it's his ideological commitment, dishonesty, ignorance, or a combination thereof, uh, he makes himself sound very unintelligent. So, it kind of applies, but don't, the title that is, but don't, don't take it too hard, okay? I'm, I'm glad to be here, and I'll never pass up an opportunity to debate the issue of animal rights, which to me, I should stress. I give him an opportunity to debate exactly that, but maybe he didn't see my comments on his videos, my tweets, or my messages. It is what it is. Is essentially the most important moral emergency that we currently face, and that's how we see this. We see it as a justice movement. This isn't some kind of... Social justice movement, right? Vegans are SGWs. Most important moral emergency. Um, I wonder if he still feels the same way now that Hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of people have been locked inside cages against their will. I wonder. Diet. It's not some kind of fad. We're not doing this for the environment. Uh, we're doing this. Uh, or at least if we are doing it for the environment, we don't care about the environment for its own sake. We care about it because of the effects that it will have on conscious creatures. I'm sure some vegans feel this way, but I don't believe he should be the spokesperson. I mean, he could do whatever he wants, but I don't believe he was voted to be a spokesperson for vegans at large. We care about non-human animals and think that they deserve our moral consideration. Veganism, on the definition that I've already agreed, um, that, that we've already agreed upon, is essentially the one that comes from the vegan society. It's the one that I cite most frequently. Veganism is the, is the attempt to minimize to the highest extent practicable the suffering and cruelty towards animals. Spelling. But it seems to me that if you're going to uh, concede that there is some moral worth within animals, then the proposition that we should be eliminating their suffering where we can do doesn't seem an unreasonable one to me. Right, so if you say that animals don't have any moral worth, he has no argument, right? You debunk veganism insof insofar as this ideology that attempts to change society, right? All you have to do is just say, no, I don't agree that animals have moral worth. Veganism debunked, right? He can't even have a debate with you. It's really that simple. A moral act because it's not about whether you eat meat, it's about where it comes from. That is in so many words what vegans are arguing about. That is exactly why the definition says and refers to animal suffering, suffering and exploit. So you can eat meat and be vegan, according to him. That's what he just said, right? Most vegans would disagree with that. Yet somehow he is a spokesperson for vegans, veganism. Okay, if you can create a system whereby you're... Oh, and if he says it's morally okay to eat meat, at least in some circumstances, I think it's safe to assume that he eats meat, right? Wouldn't that be... It's a, it's a good guess. ...suffering or cruelty to animals. Far from that being morally permissible, that would be a vegan thing to do. Veganism is about minimizing suffering to animals, and so if you're not causing that suffering to animals, then that's an absolutely vegan thing to do. So is it about minimizing, or is it not causing suffering, right? Because if you're just minimizing suffering to animals, you're still causing it. To say to, that you have to not cause it is to completely eliminate animal suffering. So right then and there, you know, there seems to be a conflict as to what veganism actually is, right? To do. What we're talking about here is the treatment of animals and the exploitation of animals, not about the products that result from it. Okay? And so to be a vegan, you just have to accept the proposition that we shouldn't be harming animals when we don't need to. In, in the society that we've constructed... Or you can just reject that proposition, right? And debunk veganism at the moment and the way that we eat our food. We're not just talking about cows roaming around in the field and then going and being milked. We're talking about factory farming being the predominant uh, source for animal products, which means that around 95% of the animal products that are consumed in the United States come from factory farm. I don't know if this is true or not. He doesn't know that either. He's just regurgitating vegan propaganda, right? And talking about the United States. Yeah, but, you know, isn't veganism aimed at the global population? Isn't he from England, presumably? You know, why hyper-focus on the United States? Is it because it's convenient? And, you know, if you're going to argue against factory farms, then maybe that's all that you're doing. 
he seemed to suggest that, you know, we're not talking about grass-fed, pasture-raised animals, right? So is that vegan? Is that okay with vegans? It's a little confusing, this, this worldview, as he presents it. Um, to me, the idea that we have an obligation to end this kind of stuff seems to me ethically trivial, right? We are torturing innocent creatures in order to produce uh, food because we like the taste of their flesh. We don't... It seems trivial to him because he trivialized it, right? He says that people murder animals for sensory pleasure, right? That's trivializing billions of people feeding themselves with meat being not only the most nutritious, uh, the best kind of food, but also one that's easily produced, at least in, in small quantities. And, you know, he completely and utterly disrespects people's all over the world, their food sovereignty, because, what, his feelings? So he trivializes it, and then he calls it trivial, because he trivialized it. It's not trivial, it's a matter of life and death, and survival for the majority of the world, right? So, just, you gotta be honest, for starters. And if it seems trivial to you, that's because you trivialize something that is not at all trivial, because something that we've been doing forever something that has allowed us to become who we are right how can that be trivial it's it doesn't make any sense to say that it's not logical it's not fair it's not honest it's completely and utterly ignorant justify the torture of our enemies in a human context even when we have a good reason to do it and yet we seem to justify animals are not humans so that argument is debunked and we still justify the torture of enemies or people we paint as enemies i mean happens all the time so i don't know i've never seen him make videos specifically about anti being anti-human torture right he hasn't said anything about people being tormented right now because of the situation you know i've never seen him talking about maybe he has but he, he's not made it a huge part of his channel to um talk about let's say pedophilia right a huge problem in this country and I'm not saying that that debunks veganism right I'm just uh, looking at his moral character and what it is that I'm looking to see if he's honest right he says he cares about these certain things like the welfare of human beings but he hasn't shown it not to my knowledge not to the same extent that he seems to care about animals right he seems to put animals above human beings, while at the same time using, playing on your emotions, because you're supposed to care about human beings, even though he doesn't seem to, and sneakily assuming that humans are just like animals, without any evidence. ...moral community whose only crime is to be born into the wrong... ...and yet we seem to justify torturing the most innocent members of our moral community whose only crime... Innocent, most innocent members of our moral community, right? He just anthropomorphized animals, and he said that animals are members of our moral community without any evidence for this. He just, like, blurted it out. And, like, his opponent, he's got his strategy, and he's got good points, but he can't think on his feet. I don't know if he's just daydreaming right now or whatever, but these sort of statements, you need to be writing, well, you do whatever you want. But if that were me, I'd be writing that down and challenging him on the, the nonsense, right? Animals are members of our moral community, really? That's saying that, <laughs> that's literally saying that animals respect morals, right? Uh, obviously, they don't. They're not moral beings. They cannot be part of our moral community. How? If he thinks that they can, he needs to justify it. You can't just blurt, blurt that out. I mean, if your opponent allows you to do that, then that's his bad. But he, he makes a bunch of unjustified and, in my eyes, unjustifiable statements. And this is how he builds his argument, right? He's stacking BS on top of BS. ...community whose only crime is to be born into the wrong species. Assuming that you... That's emotional manipulation, right? The crime being born into a different species, right? It's not a crime. It's a fact of life. We're not punishing these animals, in other words, for any sort of crime. We use them to feed ourselves, because that's how we've survived. That is how we survive. We ...members of our moral community whose only crime is to be born into the wrong species. Assuming that you agree that natural selection is the explanation for the origin of species. I don't. So, 
there you go. You, <laughs> if you just disagree, debate over, right? Go your own way. I'm going to go my way. Leave me alone. Let me do what I will do, right? This is, this is how simple this stuff is. It's really that simple. I don't agree with your hypothesis of natural selection. I think it's hogwash, and that's that. Debate over, right? Then we have a real trouble of an arbitrary boundary between species if we resurrect the evolutionary tree that exists between us and our... If we resurrect the evolutionary tree, right? An atheist talking about, I guess you could call it a religious concept, right? He's going to resurrect the evolutionary tree, something that, A, he can't even prove is true. It's just a hypothesis, perhaps a theory. I'm not saying it's a bad theory. I'm just saying that's all that it is. There are no scientific experiments that back this theory. That's just a fact, right? But he's saying that you could resurrect it somehow. How? You could resurrect all these creatures that used to exist, all these humanoids, humans that used to exist, you could bring them back to life, right? While at the same time, you know, he has a big problem with religion because of that. Like, w w what are you doing? Nobody does that. Why is this an, any sort of an argument? Nobody's arguing for throwing people in gas chambers and eating them. He's once again trying to brainwash you by, by anthropomorphizing, you know, pigs. Saying that pigs are like humans, human like this is this is such gibberish and nonsense. To me, seems an impenetrable boundary. As stated, we will be going on. Impenetrable boundary, right? It doesn't exist. It's imaginary. So how can you penetrate something that you just pulled out of his bum hole? Uh, veganism, which is a philosophy and way of living, which seeks to exclude as far as possible and practicable all forms of exploitation and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose. In dietary terms, it denotes a practice of dispersing or dispensing, sorry, with all products derived wholly or partly from animals. And I'm gonna have that. Right, that is the definition that he, Alex, says he adheres to. If you read the Vegan Society's, Society's definition, that little addendum beneath the definition refers specifically to the diet. Right. This is what vegans are. This is what veganism is. Is that uh, veganism is completely arbitrary, and because it's arbitrary, it... of course it is. It's completely arbitrary. It's completely subjective. It's all made up, it, according to the definition that Alex believes in. Right, because he rejects the dietary part, even though he says he follows. He's just so confused, and I would say dishonest. But according to the definition that this Sanpaku-eyed, uh, sickly person on the left adheres to you could interpret it in any way shape or form you want it could mean anything you want it to mean it's completely and utterly arbitrary of course it is that's why the vegan society attempts to further define what it means to be vegan in dietary terms and lifestyle terms right that's why because they understand that their definition is hogwash at face value it's whatever you want it to be it's just an emotional manipulation. The whole definition is an emotional manipulation. And what it actually means comes after this lofty statement that's supposed to make you feel good about yourself for somehow following it in any way, shape, or form you see fit. Um, two, all animals are not worthy of equivalent or in some cases any moral protection. And three, uh, veganism is ultimately a super regulatory act. It ultimately goes beyond, above and beyond, above and beyond what we have to do. But the underlying problem that makes perfect sense to me. We're not really going to delve into that too much because I'm more interested in what Alex has to say and how I would continue to have a conversation with him, less so than what Sterling does. And he, he makes good points, um, but I also think he, he overlooks major, major gaps in Alex's reasoning and lets him get away with just nonsense. The problem with veganism is that it essentially is essentially that veganism is the moral baseline and uh, they don't really give grounds for this. So one could eat less meat. Right. There's like no grounds for any of this. It's all just made up because I say so arguments that aren't justified. They vegans shift the burden of proof and they make you try to justify why you eat meat because they can't justify why you shouldn't. Like flexitarianism, one could eat only non-factory farmed meat. Um, one could be 
an invasophore, which eats invasive species. Um, one could be a lacto-ovo vegetarian. One could be a Janus vegetarian. A so right now he's giving you what I would call people who are less vegan, right, according to the vegan definition. And then he'll go in the other direction and give you people who are more vegan than vegans. Uh, all he has to do, he's confusing the audience. He's he's making it too long-winded. All he has to do is just give you two examples on each side with veganism in the middle and make it simple and easy to digest. Which is lacto-vegetarianism. Um, one could be a vegan and blessed they eat honey, for example. Or if you want to go even further, like on the reduction of harm side, you could be a full-fledged uh, freegan. You could be a locavore vegan. You could be a locavore freegan vegan. Or you could uh, do a strict boycott of all animals. You see how just unnecessary all that is? It's just, just superfluous, man. Just get to the point. People derive products and companies that uh, profit any way whatsoever from animal use. Um, it seems to me like there's no way to draw the line on where exactly we need to, we need to reduce suffering. It seems like all of these are on a continuum of reducing suffering. Like you would, you would have a lot less suffering if you ate vegan, but you were a locavore. In other words, veganism is completely arbitrary, right? In other words, something I've been talking about, someone who eats grass-fed beef, beef and raises their own animals, for example, is more vegan than a vegan. According to the vegan definition at face value that Alex pushes, right? That is not a dietary definition. It has nothing to do with the diet. According to that ideology, I'm more vegan than the cosmic skeptic could ever be, right? But I'm not going to flaunt that in virtue signal. It's just a fact. How much is your fair share when it comes to the, the torture of animals, let's say? Torture of animals? Like, what is that? What do you mean by that? Who's torturing animals? Where? But it seems to me that he's saying that all animals that are used in the food production are tortured, right? That's asinine. They're not. But if you're going to say that, you better justify it and define what it is you mean by torture. And then you're going to have to deal with the fact that most people will disagree with you. What's that say? Well, your fair share is doing absolutely nothing. None of that. Taking part in none of it, right? If one animal is tortured, that's a moral abomination. None of it, right? So once again... He's not clearly defining what veganism is. The the line, like um, Sterling is saying, there is no line. It's a continuum. It's There's no clearly delineated moral line where veganism begins or where it ends. It doesn't exist. It's all arbitrary, made up, and it's all nonsense. Because sometimes you have to, according to Alex, right? You have to eliminate all animal suffering. Sometimes you just have to minimize it. It's like, well, which is it? It can be both at the same time, right? He's proving Sterling's point. And Sterling, I don't know if he's not paying attention or what, but he's not catching on. If one animal is tortured, that's a moral abomination. If one animal is tortured, that's a moral abomination, right? Tons of animals are tortured in combine harvesters with pesticides that kill them slowly, with viruses that are being released to, to, to murder them, according to Alex, right? Tons and tons and tons of animals are tortured in this so-called vegan food production. And that's a, so veganism is a moral abomination, right? We just debunked veganism. Alex, you just debunked veganism. It's really how, how simple this is. Right. If one animal is tortured, that's a moral abomination. Yes, I could go and sell my camera equipment, let's say, right? Which you may, which, and I could give that money to charity and that may save some lives. But by buying that camera equipment, by paying my rent, I'm able to make videos, which allow me to make more money to then donate to charity, um, which I do regularly. I mean, I, I, for instance, by spending money on camera equipment and becoming a vegan advocate, I was able to start a merchandise store from which we sell t-shirts uh, of, of which all of the profits are donated to charity. So we probably actually... Oh man, the, the virtue signaling, dude. You know, in my opinion... This is what Alex is doing. I could be wrong. It's just my opinion. Let's judge him a little bit. Atheism was no longer hot on YouTube. He needed to reinvent himself. So he jumped on the vegan schlong. And now he's going to ride that till the next thing, probably. It is what it is. So the argument that Sterling was putting forth is that, you know, even if you don't eat meat, there's still more you could do to be more vegan, I guess. He didn't say that exactly, but that's basically the implication, right? You could do more. Why not do more? Because it's practicable to to do this, right? So the example was, well, Alex could sell his camera equipment and donate it to, I don't know, animal welfare or something. But he's saying, well, yeah, but if I make the more money that I make, then I could do all these other things. Not realizing that the more money you make, that the more 
our economy grows, that in and of itself is going to exploit animals, period. That's just what it is. Welcome to life, right? Um, and these T-shirts that he sells that supposedly help animals, I'm sure they're all coming from veganic cotton fields where <laughs> no animals are, are, are suffering, right? And and the petroleum is, you know, the, the cars that they distribute, um, these, you know, these T-shirts these to wherever they need to go or planes or whatever, um, those are obviously run on donkey farts and they never hurt any animals, right? It's just like, this This is a perfect example of ideology and not philosophy. This guy, he isn't thinking about what impacts his activity may have on, you know, the things that he believes should or shouldn't be happening. He's merely, he's doing what he wants to do to make money or whatever, to make himself feel good so he could brag about it online. And then he's justifying what he does by completely and utterly taking out of the broader context and just just focusing on any small positives that his actions may bring about insofar as animal welfare, completely ignoring that those same actions also cause animal suffering, right? He's not doing a fair and honest calculus of his actions on animal welfare. He's just cherry-picking the good things, ignoring the bad ones, right? And virtue signaling. Done more good for the world. Uh, by not selling those products. It's not as straightforward as the issue of, am I, ob am I obligated to, ref to refuse? Right, it's not as straightforward as just cherry-picking what you see as good and completely ignoring what you know is bad. To pay somebody to harm an animal, to torture a sentient creature so that I can eat its flesh. That to me is a, is a completely different question. With These are just emotional appeals. Uh, you know, it's an oversimplification of food production and it, it's just so simple it's so trivial he trivializes what food is what the food production looks like he doesn't look at you know the happy animals on any given farm and i'm not saying all of them are or aren't or that they should or shouldn't be but this is a reality some animals are very happy protected from you know predators and they run around on grass and they live happy lives some of them even long lives on average, definitely longer lives than in the wild, so on and so forth, right? He doesn't look at any of the good things that come from animal agriculture and all the happiness, animal welfare that this produces. To him, animal agriculture is torture, right? Torture and murder. That's all that it is, which is just completely and utterly dishonest. That's not all that it is. He trivializes it, brings it down to just that, just just so and this is ethical right to ignore the good and focusing on bad brainwashing you with it exaggerating the bad calling things that aren't torture torture and saying over representing how it, because there is some to torture happening there for sure right but those are few and far between those instances but he he pretends like few bad apples are basically representative of the whole animal agriculture industry Right, just emotionally manipulating people, ignoring all the good, focusing on the few bad apples, and he calls himself ethical. Right, like it's just this guy doesn't make any sense. Completely different answer. But even if I were to just grant it to you and say yes, okay, fine, let me just agree with you. Uh, I'm I'm being a hypocrite and I should be selling everything that I own to charity. That would just be nothing more than a two way fallacy. That would just be to say, look, why aren't you doing this? I might be like, fair enough, yeah, I'm I'm a hypocrite, but that doesn't change the argument in any way. There are websites you can go to. He's correct there, right? It doesn't debunk the argument that veganism puts forth. It doesn't. It just shows us that you're a hypocrite. Obviously, he, he'll disagree, but that's because of his narrow-minded worldview and his dishonesty about what it is that he is actually doing, what sort of an impact his life holistically has on animal welfare. If that, you know, if you care about that, then you would look at that honestly and you would investigate that prior to developing this ideology and then using that to justify the things that you do, right? You would be honest and you would look at the whole big picture. You would truly be, because that's the only way to really be interested in animal welfare. He's not. He's interested in himself pushing his channel and making money. That's what he's interested in. Which, if you type in how long you've been a vegan for, it will tell you exactly, statistically, how many animals you've saved. Really? Do you believe that? You could go to a website and type in how many months or years you've been vegan for. It's going to tell you exactly how many animals you've saved. 
Like, it's just, that's just such nonsense. It doesn't exist. That's impossible. It's, you can't even quantify that. And it's probably these equations or whatever, these estimates are conducted by people who have just as a narrow-minded view of reality as Alex does, right? They don't look at the good. They just look at the bad. They hyper-focus on, on the nonsense and, and the propaganda that they want to push. But, you know, because there's a website somewhere where you could type in some numbers and it's going to tell you where you how many animals you save, well, then exactly at that, you know, we should just accept that because he says so, right? Like, this is just such nonsense, pseudoscientific garbage, trash, junk. I can't imagine his how his opponent just lets him get away with this. And Alex, if you think you've saved however many animals you think you've saved, my simple question to you is, where are they? Environmental impact, but that doesn't change the obligation that we have on putting pigs into gas chambers. If we're killing a pig for... Putting pigs into gas chambers, right? The pigs that I eat get a hammer to the head or, you know, a knife through the heart. There are many other ways of, of killing pigs. But, you know, th these are just emotional appeals. He's just pulling out all, all the worst examples of animal agriculture and not at all talking about anything that good or, or less bad or whatever. He's just emotionally manipulating you, misrepresenting animal agriculture, trivializing it, oversimplifying um, whatever problems may exist in that industry. It's pleasure, right? We're talking... So if I just switch out the sense pleasure, if I say that I'm doing it for my hearing, right? I really like the sound that a pig makes when I put it in a gas chamber. I really like the way that it squeals. I'm beginning to think that these vegans really are just evil people, man. Whatever, man. It's, it's just emotional manipulation, complete and utter denial of and rejection of, you know, why food exists, <laughs> that it is the most nutritious food that a human being can eat, complete and utter rejection of reality and just hyper-focusing on emotional manipulation, right? Pigs in a gas chamber. Well, what is that? What what association is he drawing there, right? Jews being gassed by Hitler. That's basically, that's what he, he says if you eat bacon, you're Hitler. That's what he's saying. Right. Lower a pig into a gas chamber and film it for me so that I can listen to the squeals, right? Would you say that I have an obligation not to do that? Because that's exactly what we're doing when we go into a supermarket and we pay money across the counter, economically demanding a pig be put into a gas chamber. You, I mean, this is completely not a nonsense, right? You feeding yourself, even if you don't think animal foods are healthy, right? Because you've been brainwashed by nonsense, pseudoscientific trash. Even if you don't think that, obviously, it's so much more than just taste pleasure. It's so much more than that. Of course it is. There's just such dishonesty from these people. It's, you really have to wonder how they've convinced themselves, if they did, that they're actually ethical. How, Alex... How is dishonesty ethical? What, what is this ethical system that you're pushing? This moral system that, that you adhere to? What, because, you know, one of the tenets of it seems to be that dishonesty is ethical. In the United Kingdom, 25% are stunned, so to speak, and killed by lowering them into a pool. In the United Kingdom, 25% of pigs are stunned, right? Well, then, obviously, not every time you buy some bacon... Are you contributing to that? Pigs are killed in a variety of ways, right? But it's just, he just picks, again, he just cherry picks the worst possible scenario because Hitler, <laughs> and and he just manipulates people emotionally. These aren't logical arguments. These aren't honest arguments. This is emotional manipulation. That's all that this is, right? So while a minute ago he was talking about what happens in the United States, now he's talking about a quarter of you know, the pigs killed in, in the United Kingdom because it just suits his dishonest narrative. He just pulls out these little things that he can manipulate you with without giving you a bigger picture, right? And then, then he says it's trivial because he trivialized it. Pigs are stunned, so to speak, and killed by lowering them into a pool of CO2. Uh, they're lowered in pairs in a metal crate, which acidifies the liquid in their eyes and their mouths and causes them to spend the last 30 seconds of their lives choking on carbon dioxide and desperately trying to escape. These are just emotional appeals. These aren't logical arguments. These these are fallacies. Sorry, that's just what they are. 
If the definition of veganism is about the minimization of suffering and exploitation, if you take an animal which is incapable of being... Is it minimization or is it elimination? Like, which is it? He can't even get the definition straight. It's, he's all over the place, right? Proving st Sterling yet again right. The definition of veganism is about the minimization of suffering and exploitation. If you take an animal which is incapable of being exploited because it doesn't have the qualities that you, that you think are necessary for an animal to be exploited, then they wouldn't fall under the definition of veganism. Okay, okay so be an animal. Right, so if I don't believe an animal suffers or is exploited, then I can eat it and be vegan. That's what he just said. Right, because he's a moral subjectivist. Whatever you say goes, goes. He can't, he can't tell people what to do. He has to convince you to agree with his worldview, his BS. And only once you accept his BS can he then judge you morally. But if you just reject his BS, he cannot tell you what to do or how to do it. Because that's just incoherent. He will refute himself. Well, but they wouldn't be suffering. Well, that's at least the definition some of veganism again. It just says, it does not say anything about whether the animals are fish or whether the animals are... Okay. It sure, says, sure. a philosophy and a way of living which seeks to exclude, as far as is possible and practicable, all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for yada yada yada, right? Which means exploitation of and cruelty to. If you have an animal which is not capable of, of experiencing cruelty and exploitation, then you can do whatever you like to it and it's still vegan, because to be a vegan is to eliminate the exploitation and the cruelty. Right, so if you have... A non sentient human being, Alex says, you can kill and eat it. That's morally permissible. That's this is his worldview. Is that ethical? <laughs> what I'm saying is if I did the exact same thing, but the pig was being loaded into the gas chamber because I like the way it sounded instead of me liking the way it tastes, that it would be uncontroversially true that I have an obligation not to do so, that you think me a moral monster if I thought in any way I had the right to demand a pig to be loaded into a gas Right, he relies, he depends on people believing what he believes, but you could just reject it and say, no, I think it would be perfectly fine to do all those things just because I like to hear pigs squeal. Now, most people obviously would disagree, but you could just say, no, I, I think it's perfectly fine. And according to Alex's worldview of moral subjectivism, relativism, you're, you're perfectly and... You're moral, right? That action is morally justifiable because morality is relative. Ethics are whatever you say they are. That's why he has to brainwash you into... He has to completely misrepresent what the world actually is so that you come to the conclusion that he wants you to come to. He's, that's why he has to manipulate people. Chamber because I liked the way that it sounded. And yet that is exactly what we do. If you say something like, well, look, I think it's, it's wrong. We have a moral obligation not to harm certain animals. But I think that other animals don't fall under that category because of X and Y reason. It's like you're not disagreeing with the definition that it's wrong to exploit animals. You just don't think these animals are being exploited because they're not subjects of life. You still agree with the proposition that if they did fall under that category, that it would be wrong to exploit them. And that's all veganism is. Veganism is the proposition that if an animal can be exploited, if it is the kind of animal which is subject to that experience, of which it's capable uh, of exploiting and suffering and, and committing cruelty against that we should not do so and and that's what you're agreeing with that is that's not true because once again you go read what it says what the vegan society has to say and all just about all vegans agree with this you cannot eat animal products you cannot eat even non-sentient animals and be considered vegan it doesn't work that way so he's just deluded or dishonest or i don't know it's just the definition of veganism Okay, so that, I completely disagree with that. I think that's one of the silliest arguments I've ever heard. In terms of, course of it is. you can't say that you're a vegan. In, in dietary terms, it denotes a practice with disperse, uh, dispensing with all products derived wholly or partly from animals. I think fish are animals. I think that I think that birds are animals. I just don't think they're a subject of a life. But there are, of course, there are animal products which I think it's ethical to eat. Absolutely, because I don't care about question. the fact that it's an animal. He thinks it's ethical to eat animal products, right? Most vegans don't, but he is a spokesperson for most vegans for veganism. It's just nonsense. This guy is just. He can't be. I mean, look, I think this is the problem. He's a good speaker, orator. He, you know, he's got oratory skills. He's a good talker. Yeah? He's a good salesman. He yaps. He's got the gift of gab. But that doesn't mean that he's intelligent, right? Now, like I said before, he is, but 
perhaps not as smart as he thinks he is. Perhaps not as smart as most of these people that follow him think he is. He can't be, right? Can he? I care about where it came from. Right. Okay, let me ask you a question. Sure. What if I said I was a vegan, but all animals, except for cows, are not part of that definition? Like, there's no exploitation of anything except for cows. Would I still be a vegan? Uh, I would think that you were wrong, but I think that you've, like, you, you would still be agreeing with the vegan principle. You'd be agreeing with the vegan principle, right? So he would just disagree, but because morality is subjective, you can be vegan and do that. He just disagrees. That's his only argument. I disagree, but you're morally correct in doing what it is that you can, you, because he's just proving Sterling correct, that veganism is completely arbitrary, right? You can eat beef and be vegan if you think that that's vegan, right? Because that's the definition of veganism, completely and utterly subjective and arbitrary. Okay, the problem there is not one of veganism, because you're agreeing with the principle, the moral principle, that we should eliminate suffering where, where we can, right? The, the problem there is that you, you just mischaracterize what can and can't feel pain, it seems to me, right? Okay. That, that's not a problem with veganism, that's a problem with your understanding of animals and okay. their nature. I, I'm gonna, so what I'm going to say is this, you're, you're essentially casting negative utility. And, you know, he may be right, he is, I think, when it comes to cattle, right? But you still have to assume that just because they feel pain, it's not okay to eat them, which is nonsense. It doesn't make any sense. Justify that, right? How do you justify it? You can't justify that, but try. But, you know, when it comes, even if we assume this, at least part of this vegan worldview, well, there are plenty of animals that don't feel pain. And you can't show that fish do, for example. There are humans that don't feel pain. There are non sentient human beings, right? Veganism says, hey, eat those, right? You can eat people and be vegan. This is just nonsense. Vegetarianism as ethical veganism. Essentially, like well, if somebody I, I agrees see, with the yes. principle of of negative utilitarianism, they are like that's that's just what it means to be a vegan. That seems like what you're saying. Well, I think they're committed to being a vegan. Yes, yeah, so vegan. No, well, I'm saying extension. that they should, they seem equivalent because if you just agree with any type of suffering that's morally relevant, ultimately it's like it's a way of living which seeks to include, as far as practical and possible, all forms of exploitation. You could start. You could stop there because all. It makes perfect sense. Negative utilitarianism, just eliminating suffering in this world. I mean, you could completely and utterly reject that worldview. Most of you do anyway, right? You go to the gym, you suffer, you do things that are painful for whatever reason, because in another way, shape, or form, they benefit you. Oh, well, right? So you don't agree with eliminating all suffering or as much as possible. You don't agree with that. So you could just reject that worldview and go on your own way and whatever. Alex can't tell you how to be moral or ethical. He can't. He has no justification for any of it. But Sterling is right in saying that veganism as it exists right now is just, or the way Alex is presenting it is negative utilitarianism. But, but this is my opinion. Um, veganism is designed to draw the line between people and animals. It's, and this is in, in part how it does that. It's just focusing on animal suffering, not giving a damn about human suffering, right? People who won't be allowed to eat meat are going to suffer. It is what it is. We all know this. Alex knows. If he doesn't know it yet, he will soon enough, right? Maybe not everybody, but you're going to cause mass amount of suffering in people if you just take away their meat, period. That's just a fact, right? But it's, it's to look at it for what it is, is to admit that it's negative utilitarianism, right? Is to admit that you want to... Because if you're saying that, you know, animals are like people, people are animals, blah, 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 so on and so forth, well, then you should treat both equally, basically. But you can't do that. That's just not reality. It doesn't exist that way. So, because our existence on this planet and us prospering and being, you know, happy and healthy is going to cause suffering, not only of animals, but other people. It's just a fact of life. But veganism draws this line between human happiness because it doesn't care about people being happy. Vegan, and you can see this in, in many vegans. They don't care about people being happy or healthy or not suffering. They don't care about human suffering. All they care about is animals not suffering, right? So they have to draw that line. 
between veganism and negative utilitarianism, when in reality, they should admit that that's all that that is. But they can't, because that would mean that we have to weigh people's happiness or the lack of suffering. We, we have to put that in, in, in this equation and start talking about that a lot more, right? Vegans don't want to do that. Moral. Uh, because veganism, as they keep saying over and over, it's all about the animals, right? It's completely arbitrary. The line that they draw is completely arbitrary. You know, included in those forms of exploitation, they're, per, they're assumed by there even being such a thing as exploitation. In so many words, what I'm saying. Look, if, yeah, if you so, agree I mean, with... What, is, what extra work is and cruelty to animals doing? If what you agree with the... work is it doing? Well, um, I think the most people not. interpret animals in that definition to mean non-human animals but um, that's up to you if you want to interpret that way or not uh, if you do then we have a useful definition which essentially is that it, it would be similar to being an advocate for for women's as soon as you say non-human animals you just name the trait right they're not human and you just debunked veganism rights not meaning that you don't care about men's rights but just that you're talking about women's rights in this particular context in the same way i could say that we're talking about the elimination of the exploitation of non-human animals um but that is just a derivative of a broader philosophy that also applies to humans. You say, look, um, if you're just saying, uh, it, it's like you're criticizing me somehow. It's a complete and utter delusion, okay? Because for us to prosper, once again, animals have to suffer. And other people, too. It's just this is what it is. Oh, for, for saying something akin to, well, it, it seems, Alex, that you're just saying that therefore we should just like not exploit any being that has sentient capacity. It's like, yeah, that's, that's exactly my argument. The point is this, it's, it's one of consistency. If it's not one of consistency because once again, animal agriculture exploits and murders, according to Alex, tons and tons of innocent sentient animals. So he's just deluded. If you believe there's such things, moral obligation towards human beings, then you're gonna have to name the, the, the reason or the, or the justification for not affording that to other animals which can also experience suffering He's trying to play this dumb game of name the trait, right? When he already named the trait that debunks veganism. And obviously his trait is sentience, which once again, I've said it a million times, which should, you know, if these people were paying attention, if they were honest, they would stop playing this dumb game already because the, their trait sentience says that you could murder and eat non-sentient human beings. That's vegan. It's just nonsense. Cruelty, right? That's exactly what I'm saying. So if you turn around... And he's shifting the burden of proof. The burden of proof is on you to prove why people shouldn't eat animals. We don't need to prove to you why we, why we can. Because guess what? We can. It's that, that we should be eliminating all exploitation. It's just negative utilitarianism. It's like, yeah. Okay, but that's not equivalent. Right, so veganism is... He admits to it. He's somewhat honest. It's negative utilitarianism. So why even have veganism? Well, because you don't really care about people suffering. That's why. Technical veganism. And that's, that's not what I define as. Uh, I don't think that that's what the definition that the vegan society would agree with. I don't think that that's what most vegans use in their daily life to mean veganism. But well, I would have to disagree there. And, and I think that we should I, 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 think we do. Them, so. I, I don't think we do need to disagree. Let, let me just ask you this. Let's, let's take the definition of face value. Let's say that the definition of veganism, it, it means to be an ethical veganism. You have to say that if an animal can be exploited and can experience cruelty, we have an obligation not to inflict it upon them. Do you agree with that statement? That no. If an animal is capable of experiencing suffering, we have a moral obligation not to inflict it upon it without good reason. Okay. Um, no. I don't think that... Right? You just... Bam. You just rejected veganism. There's nothing he can do. Suffering is enough. I don't, think that, well, I don't think that pain is enough or suffering is enough. Right? That's what my second contention is going to be. Okay. So what, what else is needed? Let's move on. So we're going to... Are you doing like the kind of the name the trait type of argument then? Well, that's not what I was doing there, but we can't. Oh, do well, that. that's, what I you were, that's what I thought you were doing. Sorry, we we, we can do that if you like. That's fine because I'd be interested to hear what your trade is. Right, shifting the burden of proof. No, you have to prove if if we even assume that name the trade is a valid way of determining what's moral and what isn't. I could just reject that and say it's nonsense. Get it out of here. I don't buy it. I'm not into it. Prove to me that it works. You can't. Okay. Well, then you just right. But they don't want to do any of that because it debunks their nonsense. They want you to believe that you're already vegan at least to some degree, that your ideology is already that of a vegan. And all you got to say is, no, I don't believe animals have the right not to suffer because they feel pain. I don't believe that. Bam, veganism debunked. It's that simple, guys. Okay, so move those traits, you no longer have a human. So those are essential traits to be human. If you don't have any kinship, you don't have any intentional, intentionality, you don't have capacity for moral reasoning, 
you don't have rationality. I don't think you really are a human. I think that those are essential traits of being human. And this is the game that vegans always play, right? They want to strip human of its humanity and call that a human. So that you seem to believe that it's okay to murder and, and eat that impossible, you know, hypothetical. It doesn't exist. It could never exist. Look, it's it's not so important to define what a human is exactly. Some people will say, well, a being created in the image of God. Some people will say a being with certain DNA. And, and we may have all these different definitions of what human is. It's It's unimportant where we get this definition from because all of us will look at a human being and 100% of the time we'll agree that that is a human being, if we're being honest. So there's no confusion as to what whatever definition you may use to define what a human being is, there is zero confusion as to what that actually is. We all agree on what a human is. We do. So in other words, you would who is severely disabled enough that they don't have those qualities is no longer human. Those things wouldn't, you wouldn't even be a human if you didn't have those qualities. How would you be a human if you had no, what would it mean to be a human without intentionality, capacity for more reason? You just kind of look like a human. Well, you can um, say you want right, this guy, in order to push veganism, he has to resurrect creatures that he believes existed, even though he's an atheist and doesn't believe in resurrection. He has to create a non-human human being and put it on the plate for you to eat. Right, This is the, the type of mental gymnastics these vegans have to delve into in order to attempt to try to convince someone that, you know, they should be vegan. It's just absolute and utter nonsense. And our kinship. Like our kinship, because they don't originate from any human gametes. So, sure. they... so you, once, you once had those things, and that... you're now in a, you once had those things, and you're now in a coma, to the extent that you have none of them. Are you a human well, I would being? Still have a, I would still have a capacity. Those, that's an accidental trait, no, no. not an essential no, you're, 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 not, you're not waking up. It's, an, it's still accidental. It's accidental to who I am. It's not what I am, essentially. Sure, like, I, did, have... I did have them, so obviously, essentially, what that. to me is have the capacity. Sorry, I, I should interrupt you. I apologize. No, I, I, I agree with that. It, it's an accidental property, but it's not a potential property anymore because you don't have the potential for moral capacity. It's gone. It's disappeared. You're not what waking mean? up from that coma. Are you, are you any longer human? I still would have kinship, too, for one. There's not way, any way you can remove kinship. Kinship doesn't uh, mean you, say you originate from human gametes because human gametes... Are, yeah, exactly. Well, that seems, that seems a bizarre trait to afford. Well, it's a bizarre trait, right? Being human. You, you human DNA, that which makes you human your human essence is a bizarre trait right first of all that's not an argument to put it that's just you're judging his trait right i and if it is an argument then i could say well sentience is a bizarre trait right it's just like it's just emotional drivel none of this makes any sense alex you're smarter than that dude it's a bizarre trait i can't i can't defeat it I don't know what to say about it, so I'm just going to judge it and make an emotional appeal. That could be very well used against me if we assume that it's the correct way of debunking somebody. Well, I just he just debunked himself. Either way, dude, you lose. Moral worth from. Like, look, I think it would be ridiculous for someone to call themselves a vegan and to eat fish. And I would agree with you, but not because of the definition of, ve of, the definition of veganism, but because I think fish are capable of feeling pain and are Okay, and then, then if I think fish aren't capable of eating pain or feeling pain, then I can eat fish and be vegan, right? This is his, this is his definition of veganism. It is what I what I think it is. If I think fish feel pain, who cares what the science says? And the science is murky, right? Just because they respond to stimuli, that doesn't mean they feel pain, right? If a doctor hits you on your knee and you have a reflex reaction to that, that doesn't mean that it was painful that you were suffering. If you get a little shiver when someone touches you, right? That doesn't mean that you're suffering just because there's a reaction to touch or stimuli. That doesn't mean that you, right? But this is what we have with fish. They respond to stimuli. Okay, that doesn't mean that they feel pain. But he thinks they do, so he disagrees. Okay, well then, by that same logic, I don't think they do. So I could call myself vegan and eat fish. Alex, you just debunked veganism therefore the only thing that's kind of ridiculous about it is the attempt to exclude them from doing so it's like you can we as Maybe. ethical vegans it's ridiculous right because i disagree with you even though i believe you have the right to subjectively determine what is moral what is okay what is not i disagree with you and i call you ridiculous 
That's not an argument. Decide that the expense pleasure is wrong, regardless of what the product is, regardless of what the sense is, regardless of what the animal is, as long as it's, ex as long as it's capable of experiencing cruelty, we do not have the right to inflict that cruelty upon them. On, I mean, it seems Because I say so. Like, he has no justification for any of that. It's just, you have to agree that this is correct in order for him to win the debate. And you, all you have to say, do is say, no, I disagree with that assumption. But you misunderstood the, the, the concept of a boycott when it comes to something like animal products, right? Um, now, they're, I think they're in the Q&A section now. I, I skipped a whole bunch of this debate because they kept going around in circles and a lot of it wasn't very interesting. But now they're talking about boycotting non-vegan businesses. Right. right so I'm, I'm no longer going to go and shop at, at, at Waterstone's bookshop. Um, to buy my to buy my books because they have a cafe that serves milk in its coffee, right? Because I need to boycott any industry that relies on animal exploitation. I'm going to drop out of university because we just opened a new library that uses leather seating, right? This would be absurd. Not only would it be absurd, now that might be your point. It might be to say, see, it would be absurd to try and eliminate the suffering to the highest extent. No, the reason it's absurd is because it's self-contradictory, right? It's actually not in my best interest. If we've got a company that is exploiting animals, but also has products that are not exploiting animals, not only do we have a moral permissibility to shop at that place. Let's say, for instance, um, the KFC burger or something that they just brought out, the vegan burger. I don't know if they've done that in the States. But they've got it here. And a lot of people say, no, we need, to, we need to boycott products. We need to boycott companies that rely on animal exploitation. It's like, you've got a company here that is exploiting animals and has a product where it's not exploiting animals, right? And if, if we show that we are contributing to a demand for products that don't exploit animals, especially when a lot of the people buying that product are people who are on the fence and who, who would have still gone into KFC, may well have bought a chicken burger, but now think they'll try the vegan burger, you're signaling to that company that the world is changing and that they should be doing more to accommodate veganism, right? So not only is it like, well, I think it's permissible to, to shop at a, a company that, um, that, uses, that abuses animals in, in some areas of its, of its product. It's like, you have an obligation to do so, right? If, if you want to be a, an, an activist in a sense. So you just debunked veganism yet again, right? Cargill. They grow soy and they produce a vegan product known as you know, all that junk that's in your vegan foods, that all these soy byproducts, right? Or uh, soybean oil, right? For example, that's a vegan product. Then whatever's left, the, the, the husks and the meal of the soy meal, they feed that to their pigs in their factory farms, right? So what Alex just said is that you should support Cargill, right? because Cargill in some way, shape or form supports veganism. Okay, so what he's saying essentially is that by eating factory farm bacon, you're supporting veganism. That's what he's saying. But this is the ignorance of someone who, you know, hardly ever leaves their apartment. I mean, just look at how pale he is, right? Who is, doesn't look like he has a healthy body. Thus, in my opinion, can I have a healthy mind? This is... This is the worldview of a person who doesn't know how the world works, right? Everything that we do is going to exploit animals, other human beings. It's just how this world works, right? So every single restaurant out there sells plants and or just about all of them, if they ever open. You know, they sell both plants and animal products, right? Most farmers out there, if all farmers out there depend whether you're in specifically in plant agriculture or animal agriculture, you, one depends on the other. This is just how the world works. You need animals to grow plants, and you need plants to grow animals. And it's, a, it's just what it is, right? So by supporting animal agriculture, you're supporting plant agriculture. By eating plants, you're supporting animal agriculture. And by eating animals, you're supporting plant agriculture, right? Just veganism debunks itself. Alex just debunked veganism. He just told you to eat bacon from a factory farm because that's going to up the production of canola oil, which is a vegan product. And the only reason why he says these asinine things is because he doesn't understand how the world works, right? He wants to fix the world when he has no clue about how the world works. And that's why he looks like an idiot. He sounds like an idiot sense. Alex, if humans were carnivore, would that affect your opinion on veganism? Uh, yes, it would. Uh, because, of course, the, the whole vegan argument is about the elimination uh, of unnecessary suffering, unnecessary to survival, of, of practicable. I mean, the word practicable is there in the definition. Um, we're not obligate carnivores. That's the reason why, because we have, we, I mean, we're omnivores, which definitionally means we have the ability to eat either animal product or plants, right? That's completely and utterly dishonest. No. 
A carnivore traditionally eats predominantly meat and needs to do that. An herbivore eats predominantly plants and needs to do that in order to survive. Thus, an omnivore logically, and this is the definition, has to eat both plants and animals in order to survive. Just because it could go a long time with one or the other, that doesn't mean that it's going to survive by doing just one, right? That's not the defini definition of omnivore. The definition of omnivore is not it eats either or, it's that it eats both. That is the definition of omnivore. But he has to reject reality. He has to be dishonest. He has to lie. He cannot present the world for what it is because that will just completely and utterly show him to be wrong. And he is wrong. He just changed the definition of what omnivore is because he's not a philosopher. He's an ideologue. And his opponent needs to be keener than that. Than he is. He needs to call him out on this nonsense. We have, we, I mean, we're omnivores, which definitionally means we have the ability to eat either animal product or plants, right? And because we have that capacity, because we're able to make that choice, it allows us to have, uh, to make the moral decision of, of doing so, right? If you're in a situation of necessity, as I think Sterling and I both agree, like the desert island situation, um, a vegan could eat that pig. Um, and the same situation, that would just be the situation across the board if we needed to eat animal products to survive. Okay, so if you can show that we need to eat animal products in order to survive, then you're vegan by eating animal products. That's what he said. Now, the burden of proof is actually on him to show that we don't need to eat animal products in order to survive. And every single vegan, it would seem, given long enough, cannot, cannot show this. Or at the very least, there are many instances where vegans fail. And this is easily explained by the fact that inherently the vegan diet is nutritionally deficient, that we're adapted to eating both plants and animals, um, that only animal foods contain certain essential nutrition. Like this is just scientifically, it's a scientific fact that we cannot survive as a species without eating meat. But obviously, as I've been talking about this for years now, vegans reject that reality because their worldview is... BS, and the only way they could convince you to believe BS is by rejecting that which is real. It's really that simple. So, I know this was a long video, um, and you know, if Alex ever grows a pair of bollocks and wants to talk, um, debate animal rights or veganism, I'm still here, homie. I'm still here. But something tells me uh, <laughs> you won't be coming anywhere close to me, but we both know why. Thanks for watching.